there's a story in every bottle. Hello, and welcome to yet another Monday afternoon with, uh, with the Hermits. Um, although only one Hermit is present this time, as we've, uh, uh, Geraldine and I have traveled to Manchester, Vermont, to, uh, to learn more about Fortuna Sausage. And we have with us today, Patty Fortuna, and I'm gonna introduce her in just a moment. Uh, before I do, I wanted to go over a couple of the basics so we can get everybody uh, you know, uh, tuned in and, and uh, uh, technically privy to how the show is gonna work. So, um, first of all, Ken and I believe Chuck, I don't see him here yet, but he's, uh, he's supposed to be joining us, but Ken will be joining us as well. He'll be joining us from afar. And uh, if, you, uh, if you like what you're seeing today, please like it, uh, like the broadcast, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our Facebook channel, and you'll get notifications of all of our live shows going forward. We go live every Monday. And uh, we'd love it if you'd let yourself be known, make some comments on the page so that we can, we can see who's there and say hello. And if you have questions, please ask them. We will do our best to get to, the, to your questions during the show. And uh, if we miss any of your questions, we'll be sure and go back afterwards and make sure to, to, to answer anything that you, uh, that you had. And um, if, you, uh, if you think you have some friends or family that will appreciate what we're talking about today, share our broadcast with them and they can enjoy it as well. So, uh, so thank you all again for joining us on this Monday afternoon. I'm really excited to, uh, to be here today. Um, we have been carrying Fortuna Sausage at Hermitwood's Winery since I think we do agree like 2015 or 16. Right. So for a long time, it's become a favorite. Um, I bring it home quite often and enjoy it at home as well. And I know we, we have many of these fine products on our charcuterie boards and, and, uh, and in many of the things that we fix in our deli. So lots of you are already familiar. But if you're not, this is a great, great chance to, to learn more about these great products. And even better, I got to come here today, my first real trip since, since COVID started, and, uh, and, and learn more about the actual store where some of this stuff is sold. And so uh, we're going to get into that, all of those details in just a second. So uh, before I do that, I want to introduce you to, to, uh, to Patty. Um, uh, Patty's the founder of Fortuna uh, Sausage. Did you find it on your own? Were you the... Uh, sole founder? Or no. Have... Well, we started Fortuna's Sausage Company. But okay. My parents parents. had Fortuna's Delis ah, in okay. Connecticut. And then we branched out after our deli and in Rhode Island. And we branched out and then we went into just the manufacturing of sausages and salamis and shipping them all around the country. Okay. And great. that's where Fortuna Sausage came in. Okay, great. So, uh, so uh, that's much clearer than my understanding. So I'm glad you're here to <laughs> clarify. And uh, and you are a third generation sausage maker. I am. I the, am. Uh, the the uh, people have been making sausage in your family back 130 years. About, is that right? Yeah, about 130. And your sausages have had all kinds of acclaim all over the country and probably the world. I, I, yes. I, uh, I, I think you could share that with us. Um, but I know that just reading some of the some of the things that you shared with me about uh, you've got to meet Jay Leno uh -huh. and uh, Martha Stewart and so uh, so quite a quite an acclaim. It's really really it's exciting to be here with you. Well, thank I, you. I'm, we're, I'm really happy to have you here too. It's Excellent. really exciting. It's my first adventure out also, so <laughs> it's Great. nice. And we're going to taste some of the new salamis that we've come up with this year. During COVID, we had a lot of extra time, so we had some new salamis we've created. Fabulous. So, fabulous. yes. 
and uh, and and I brought some of my wines. Oh, uh, perfect. And uh, Ken and I and Chuck and our and our team have had lots of opportunities to try some of these wines with some of the sausages and the products that we have at the winery. <laughs> but there's a bunch of new ones here, as there you just is. pointed out. There so I'm is. excited to to try. And uh, as as uh, Ken would be upset with me if I didn't get wine in our glasses real soon. Okay. So we're going to start with a uh, our Lake House White, which uh, many of you are familiar with. This is our our. Uh, a Burgundian style white wine only crafted with uh, peaches, rhubarb, rose hips, and quince. Ooh. Chardonnay doesn't grow in New Hampshire, so we're going to work with what we got. And everything is from New Hampshire. Um, in this, yes, in this case, all the ingredients are from New Hampshire, all the ingredients are organic. Some of it's actually hand harvested by Ken. We go down to the beach every uh, August uh -huh. and we harvest rose hips for about two weeks. We take wow. a couple trips and uh, that's where we get the rose hips for this. Wow. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and rose hips, believe it or not, they make. Just the rose hip wine, we, we have a, uh, we sometimes make the wine separately and blend later, mm -hmm. and the rose hip wine all by itself is just amazing. Mm -hmm. But uh, even better when it's blended with these Sounds other Sounds great. So, uh, so cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Mm. So there you go, Ken. I'll bring Ken oh. in to say hello to everybody. He's here. Oh, wow. That there is you. wonderful. Thank Hi, you. Ken. Hi. <laughs> cheers. So nice, to, so nice to see you. Cheers. <laughs> I hope you have something in your glass, because, uh, What's yes. that? I hope you have something in your glass. I do. It's uh, spring in session with a uh, splash of Campari. Ah, nice. nice. <laughs> so, uh, spring in session is a, is a new release. We've released it a few years ago, but it's a honey wine made Ooh. with uh, honey and rhubarb wine blended together. We'll and, have to uh, try that. Yeah. Next time I'm heading up to yes. New Hampshire. Yes. <laughs> so, and it's done as a session, so it's a lower alcohol, and it's with a, uh, it's got a, it's got a sparkle to it. So oh, nice. Right. We, uh, as you know, started with Lake House White. Um, yeah, do you know if Chuck uh, will be joining us? Yeah, Chuck. Uh, Chuck says he's uh, he's watching. He's on, but uh, I don't know if he can jump in. I think he went through Facebook, Bob. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But, uh, right. I'm well, I'm really jealous. I wish I were there to to try the the beautiful selection of sausages you have. Hopefully you'll get a doggy bag. <laughs> I, I don't think you got to worry, Ken. I don't think you have to worry either. I'm Italian. Daryl and I don't have a doggy bag. <laughs> we've been salivating ever since we got here, looking around at all the, the wonderful things in this shop. So I, we're going to have to bring some new things back to have in the deli to share with Good. all of our, our guests Excellent. as well. Excellent. And, uh, and speaking of our guests, I want to just say, there's Chuck. He's on. He's got, uh, he'll, he, so that'll be good. Chuck can help answer some questions okay, for us. Okay, perfect. Good to see you, Chuck. Glad you could could make it. And uh, we've got a few regular folks here that we see every Monday. Uh, Janet's here. Uh, uh, Janice, I'm sorry. And Matt. I'm so glad you could make it, Matt. And uh, who else we got on? Kelsey. Oh, that's, and, that's my uh, social media girl. Oh, Hi, Kelsey. Good. Excellent. Hope she has her wine. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so, um so great. Let's um, let's try some food with this wine. Perfect. Great. Now, this one here, being so dry and still fruity, I would try. And there's some napkins right here if you'd like. Our new Lanza. Lanza is you ready. There mm -hmm. you go. Thank you. And I'm going to talk instead of eating at the moment. Okay. But the Lanza is a pork loin. It looks like this here. So this is one of our newest items, again, that we started creating during the COVID last 15 months. Um, but it's a pork loin. So it's a just very, very lean, and it's cured. So it's perfect on a charcuterie board. Mm -hmm. And I think just by tasting this white wine, it goes really well together. I'll tell you. Really, like, um, yeah. It certainly tastes good on its own. Yes, it does. And you pay, put that on your charcuterie boards or something like that. It's just a wonderful new product. So we have quite a few new ones here today. Um, feel like trying another? Just my arm. <laughs> okay. So I would try my other second thought is our Auberze, which is this one right here. No, okay. excuse my finger. No there worries. you go. Um, that's the Auberze. So that's just a plain dry Italian sausage um, with a little bit of black pepper, whole peppercorns. And I think that one was a little bit of the heat. So it's just a mild heat to it. And that one is just... The smell, the flavor is just to die for. And I think that would be very good with this, too. I'm going to join you if that's okay. Mm -hmm. mm. I think you nailed it with both of them. The wine comes through, so uh -huh. it doesn't, it doesn't uh, right. you know, bury the, the, the wine in the background and vice versa. The, the fruit stays, I mean, the, the, uh, the meat stays with you, the taste of the meat. 
So they blend in your mouth. You don't, neither of them disappear, disappear behind the other. I like these two together. Mm -hmm. That is really nice. Really, really nice. Ooh. This is great. You know what? what a great afternoon. I, know. I love my <laughs> is, job. Is this work? <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking as you're sharing that, uh, this is going to make a great addition. So we use, uh, we use prosciutto sometimes on, mm -hmm. our, on our boards. But prosciutto is very thin, and it's, it's sometimes hard to handle. It's hard to prepare. It's hard to, to fold and put, exactly. you know, make it look good on the, on the board. This is nice and, and sturdy. It's gonna that'll be a nice addition. It's going to be, and it's lean, and everybody loves a lean yeah. a lean salami or a lean cured meat. Um, and our copa, which we we didn't put out here today, we've had our copa forever, um, which is something you might want to try too uh, later on. And our copa was voted the best American made from the Wall Street Journal. So I don't know if you saw that on I, the website. I did. I mentioned that in, in my uh, yes. in my story. So um, it was a random taste test. A reporter did this whole random taste testing, and we were voted. We had no idea till it was published. Wow. So it was voted the best American made. So after Italy, we're number two. Not bad. Not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> no. And they've been doing it I'm in, in Italy place, a yeah. little longer than we have, I think, right? I think, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a few thousand years. <laughs> yeah. So good. We got some glass. We got some wine. We've had a little bit of food. Let's get down to some questions. We sure. want We want to learn more about your background. I'm so excited that you've got 130 years that your family's been doing this. And so... Uh, there's a lot to tell. We're probably not going to get to even half no. of it or even a, a, a scratch the surface. But um, I thought we could just start with you just telling me a little about your background, where you grew up and a little bit about your childhood and and, uh, and the early years. Sure. I grew up in Trumbull, Connecticut. OK. Um, my family actually started and I'll just keep it the business end of it. Um, okay. we, you don't need to know where I played and who I played with or any of that. So <laughs> anyhow, um, I my family had an Italian deli. And they opened that in 1972. So, where, excuse me, where is Trumbull, Connecticut? What part? Fairfield of, County. Fairfield County, which is uh, Fairfield, Westport, Stratford, okay, Bridgeport so the, the area, southwest corner of the state. Roughly. Yes. Okay. Yeah, about four hours from here. All right. Good. <laughs> Don't ask me north, south, east, west. <laughs> um, but anyhow, so we we my parents had the Italian deli at 12 years old. I was working giving samples, cutting bread, bringing the register. So I grew up in the business. Um, my dad worked for Ballantine Beer before that. Okay. Got stuck on the bridge one day. I think it was the Tappan Zee or whatever the bridge is there, going to um, Newark. Yeah. And got stuck on the bridge, and he just said, that's it. I'm done. And he went and followed his passion. And his passion was to open an Italian deli. So that's where I started working. Um, I have a sister who lives in Indiana, who hopefully she's watching. Hello. Hi. <laughs> and I have um, a son and a daughter, and I have two brothers um, and three grandsons. So my little grandsons are seven, six, and four. So I see a fourth and fifth generation sausage maker you possibly coming along. Sure do. My son runs the store, Chris. He runs the store here. He's a fourth generation. He started out in the plant probably as I was like me when he was 12 or so. My yep. kids grew up in the business. Yep. Um, we had an Italian deli, breakfast, lunch, dinner in Rhode Island. So back to that story is we, my parents had the delis and Paul and I wanted to move to Rhode Island and slow down life a little bit. And we love Rhode Island and we wanted to raise our children there. So in 1982, my dad's like, why don't we open up a deli there? So we did. And then it, within a few years, we bought that deli and maintained it and evolved into the sausage making so in that deli. Where in the in Rhode Island was the first deli that you? Westerly, Rhode Island. Westerly, okay, yep. down in the southern part of the state. Yep, right. southern part, tourist town, yep. um, and we were voted the best deli in Rhode Island. It was, you know, it was a lot, a lot of work and I raising two imagine. small children at the time. It was, it was tough, um, but I think my children are up for the better for it because they've got great people skills because they started out by being little guys working and you know, playing with matchbox cars in the back room and whatever. Yes, um, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, now my son's running this. Um, my daughter lives in Norway. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she met a Norwegian while she was studying abroad and now lives there for 10 years. Is she involved in the food industry at all? She is. Excellent. She is. And she swore she <laughs> never was going family. to be. And so <laughs> is her husband and the grandchildren. They both, they all love to cook too. 
they're all they're all going to follow in the footsteps. No doubt about it. Oh, that's, no that's doubt fabulous. about it. Yeah, it's fun too. I didn't know the Rhode Island connection because many of you know I grew up in Rhode Island, uh -huh. spent uh, a good part of my life there, and still go back there a lot. I have family in the area and in Connecticut as well. So. Oh, really? So yeah. So like a lot of people, I ended up in New Hampshire because as kids we would travel there right. for vacation. Yes. And, uh, our vacation turned into home. Yeah, we used to go to Franklin Pierce Lake every summer. Wow. In New Hampshire. Okay. And every summer, my parents had a cottage there. We would go there, and that was our summer vacation every single year. So, yes, yeah, same thing. That's cool. Yeah. So, you talk about your recipe being a hundred, you know, uh, mm -hmm. three generations ago, 130 years ago, they were making this in Italy. What part of Italy? Calabria. Calabria. A little town called Petaviano. Okay. And it is a very little town, very, very tiny. I was fortunate enough to go and visit it, um, let's say, two years ago now. Um, and I walked the cobblestone roads as my grandparents did. And it was it was the best thing I've ever done in my life. It was just, I walked the walk. That's and amazing. I went into the church where they got married. We tried to find relatives. Um, no one speaks English there, and I don't speak Italian well enough. So we did have a little difficulty there, but um, I found some nice people that were helping me translate. So that's where my family's from. So your grandparents were the ones who started this yes. recipe, who started making this sausage. Yes. And have carried it forth. Yes. So my grandparents, it's a long story, but I'll try to make it short. Okay. Um, my grandparents came to United States um, I think my grandmother was like 14. They had one of those prearranged marriages. Okay. And my grandfather was already here. And they they came here. They got married in Italy, came here, and they opened up a little market called Joe's Superette. My grandfather was Joe. <laughs> and called Joe's Superette in um, Bridgeport, Connecticut. And they worked there and obviously met my mom was born there yeah. and worked met my dad yeah you, are you following me yeah. here <laughs> met my dad my dad um started working there when he was like 14 years old uh give or take a few years and so now my dad is working in the superette they have children my parents have children they sell the superette whatever we move on my dad's trying to make some extra money he goes to work for paul's my husband, Paul, mm -hmm. um, grandfather, who had an Italian uh -huh. market in Westport, Connecticut, just part time, trying yep. to make some extra money. And he made sausage there. So it's just and obviously we didn't know the family at the time. And here I end up marrying the guy that his grand his grandson. Um, so it was pretty it was a pretty cool story. So so anyhow, we're back to. Now my, my dad goes over the bridge, gets stuck, had enough. Yep, yep. He, he wants to open up um, the Italian deli like they had and opened up the Italian deli. And my brothers and sisters and I all worked in it as we were growing up. And then I met Paul there. He came to work for us. So the same story all over again. And here we are, 42 years married. <laughs> but, Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and um, so, you know, so then we just kind of, it kind of just kept on going from there and there and there. So, so you pretty much knew you were going to be following in this business from early on. Or did you have other <laughs> aspirations that maybe you explored before you went all the way in? Um, I really, you know, it's a passion. Yeah. It's a love. It's a love-hate. You know, there's a times that I'm like, oh, I wish I did something else. But then what would I, I, I love this. I do love it. So, and I love the smiles that everybody gets on their faces. I love all the compliments I always get in emails and texts and whatever. Um, so it's a passion. You're so, clearly good at it. Thank you. I, I'll never forget early on when my <laughs> wife, who's who's in our audience today, she uh, she met you and was in the, on the phone with you a few uh -huh. times. She didn't meet you in person, but she met you on the phone. And, and she was always talking about how wonderful it was to, <laughs> to communicate with you and to Aww. talk about your sausage and to get it into the store. And and so uh, it's love, so you know, when you when you love you something, right, when you love something like that, it's a passion as your wines and it just shines right through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, people always ask. I mean, I, I spend a lot of time at work, if uh -huh. you will. And people say, how do you work so many hours? And I always say, well, 
I only work, I don't know, five or 10 hours a week. The rest of it's all fun. I'm having a good time. Look at us. We're sitting here having yeah, great right. food and drinking yeah. some good I wine. I wouldn't call this work. <laughs> no, not at all. So, um, so before, I'm going to take another break and try another wine. Before we do that, I'm still this idea of this family recipe. Okay. So, Sorry, I kind of, I do tend to get away from No, this. no, that's totally okay, because you, you, you kind of stitched it all together, so mm. that was good. So um, was there an, a, a particular sausage that was the family recipe, or was it a particular way of putting meat together to make sausage that was the family recipe? It was, it's both. Okay. It's both. Um, as a little girl, I remember, I don't really know too far back. Okay. Okay. Um, like when my grandparents made it sure. in the market, I don't, I didn't know enough to ask the questions at the time. So, but I do remember having my grandmother having, you know, the salamis wrapped in a dish towel, hiding in the closet, you know, in the linen closet. Nobody, you know, only came out for special occasions. They only made small amounts at, mm -hmm. this, at this point of my life. And it was, you know, that was a special thing. Our most popular salami and the traditional, our signature salami, I guess you can call it, yeah. is our soupy which is a Calabrese style salami, which is the recipes that they brought over from Italy and the process. We do not use nitrates. We don't use preservatives um, in any of these salamis here today. Um, the mortadella might, I'm not sure, yes, see. Um, but anyhow, so yes, so the recipes are, have been built on. Um, we've added new things. We've added different, you know, to make it, um, in today's trends, sure. but we've also kept the authenticity. We've kept the tradition. We still do not use the nitrates. We yep. still don't use the preservatives. It still literally hangs in ages like your wines. Yep. It would just, it just ages. It just hangs there in ages. So it's not something like a grocery store brand, which is made cooked, packaged, sold within 24 hours. Right. This literally hangs in ages, and that's where you get the smells and the, the aromas that are so wonderful that really bring you back. So another thing that I am interested to learn about is that you talk about the, the source of the meat that you use to, to make these products, and, and it's clear to me that you care about that, and yes. like with anything, you need great ingredients to make a great product. So tell us a little bit about the, the farmers you're working with and, and the source for, for many of your meats. So when we first moved to Vermont, 11 years ago now, full time, we started using just local Vermont pork. Um, and we're trying to keep it just the local Vermont pork. But unfortunately, we do sell nationwide. So it's not that we have just this little market. You know, we have our website where we sell nationwide. So they couldn't supply us. And they wanted to supply us. And then, so they were feeding the pigs quick, 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 <laughs> quick. And then it was getting to be a very inconsistent product. So now we get some of our meats from um, Canada, okay, uh, Montreal, and they're all um, free range and you know the whole the whole bit hormone free. Mm -hmm. um, and we also get it from the Midwest. And in our um, pancetta, we're using a heritage breed pig, which is they called a mangalista, mm -hmm. um, which is a very high bred pork. So we we experiment a lot, and it's not only the meat. It's the process. So, and it's the spices. Our pistachios in the salami come from Italy. So the pistachios that we're using are Italian. Um, the Calabrese pepper that's in the Calabrese salami comes from Calabria. And it really comes, like we order it from Calabria. So, you know, it's, it's the ingredients. It's not necessarily just the pork. Of course, yeah. actually, it's, it's the, the recipe, it's yes. the secrets, which you're, I'm sure you're not going to share with me. But, um, and and I, you mentioned Calibre. Uh, I, I Googled Calibre to find out where it's, so isn't it like the heel it of is. the boot? Is that about exactly. it for anybody who's interested in to yes. find out where Southern where Italy. Is. So let's take a minute, I'll pour another wine. Before I do that, to check with the, our audience, we had a couple comments. Um, Kathy uh, says she just saw... So I was talking, she says, she used to go to Fortuna's many times when she, I think, lived in uh, in Westerly. Okay. She's from Westerly, Connecticut, I guess. Westerly, Rhode Island. Westerly, Rhode Island. Okay. So she's familiar with uh, Hi, Kathy. that. And you have a Deb, Deb Izzo? Yes. Here to say Hi, Deb. Hello. She's on YouTube today. Uh-huh. And uh, Rosemary Fortuna, is that oh, your sister? Oh, that's my sister. Excellent. Uh, let's see anybody else. <laughs> 
We got a nice crowd. Yeah, we got a good crowd. We got about 15 people watching us right now. So let's pour a little bit of our red scare. We'll put this aside. Sure. And uh, I'm gonna finish this because this was delicious. Yeah, you should absolutely. Mm. So most Heaven. of you already know uh, out there about our red scare. I'll tell you just briefly. This is also styled after a sort of a, more of a Burgundian, more like a Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. um, but it's actually a mead. It's made with mm -hmm. honey. It's made with blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and honey. And they're fermented together. It's fermented all the way dry. And then Ken ages this for about 12 to 14 months in French oak. And then another uh, almost a year in stainless steel before we... Wow, uh, it smells wonderful. It's really aromatic. Mm. And I think Ken would say, maybe I'll pull, pull Ken up here and he can talk a little bit about, this is, I think, one of his favorite, uh, favorite wines. Ken, tell us a little more about your Red Scare. Yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites. Um, in fact, I think now that the uh, spring in session is gone, I may have to open up one of those. Watching you sipping that is, is making me <laughs> <it better. laughs> it's, uh It's always been a, a very pleasing uh, wine to work with, working with the local ingredients. It started off as a very small batch in my backyard from from wild berries that I picked in my yard and took honey from the beehives that my son had set up in our backyard. And so it was a, a very, you know, an estate product right from here. And the name comes from a from a Frisbee team my son was playing on in college. So that's where the Red Scare came from. <laughs> And uh, it, when he when he graduated, I got to give him four four years in a uh, for a vertical tasting. He he was in college in 08, 09, 2010, and twenty eleven. You uh, today on the on the show there you have our twenty eighteen vintage. It is wonderful, I and I taste the honey. I taste the berries, yeah. but not overpowering, of course. Yeah, mm. but I'm very curious to hear what you say. To recommend of your your sausages to go with it because um, I really enjoy drinking Red Scare. So having, I, I really love your sausages. So if you, if we can marry those together, I'm, I'm going to be consuming that quite often. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what I do want to know is this, is this your deepest, richest? No. Okay. This is more like a Pinot Noir. The, Pinot Noir. the, okay. the biggest one I brought today is our, is our Hermitage. Okay. We'll, we'll so that, that would get to the, the hotter, yes. stronger salamis. Yes. Yep. So with this one, I'm kind of thinking, the guanciale. Guanciale is the peak's cheek. Okay. The jowl. Excuse me. And I think because it's a creamy, it's this here. Mm. And we also, it's this one right here. I've never had this before. This is fairly new for us. And we have it with the herbs. And we also have it plain. I'm just going to grab a napkin mm -hmm. here. Wow, that is so interesting. Isn't that nice? I've never had anything like it. It's, I mean, it's a fatty product, yeah. but all salamis are and mm -hmm. meant to be. Um, but I think, and how does it taste with the wine? Mm. Mm. I think it works nice. I think it does too. Hmm. Again, they're not com out competing each other. No, otherwise. no, they're not, and that's um, that's what you want. You want them to just complement yeah. each other and just be married to each other. I'm I'm wondering if if something maybe with just a touch more spice might be nice to try this with. Also, with uh, yeah. there's a little bit of a of a tartness in the mm -hmm. wine. There is that that maybe actually just a little. You know, the tartness comes comes uh, overpowers just a touch on the the fatty part. I'm wondering if it's just a touch of spice might. Uh, I like the fatty taste of it. Yeah. Um, the whoa, the fat with I can't get it. There we go. There you go. Can you get it? There I you go. Got it. Um, and that's that's our Calabrese pancetta. Okay. So that's the pork belly, and it is it's like an Italian bacon, and we rub it down with pepper. It's this one right here. So it's not pepper on the inside. It's just the pepper on, the, on the outside. And how is that? That might be a nice. If you like the little bit of heat with it, I like that. I think of the two. You they, like the they pancetta? both work, but I like the pancetta. Okay. Just a, a touch of the spice. Why don't you see what see if you're Okay. Great. Yes. 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 We didn't make it um, easy to reach here. 
Don't worry, Ken. We'll we'll bring both back for you to uh, to make your own assessment. Oh, I I do think this one's going to be. Yeah. Just a little bit of that spiciness because there's a spiciness to this to the red scare. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, this one here, the pancetta with the calabrese, pepper on the outside, hands Good. down. Excellent. Hands down. I love it. Wow. Excellent. Very nice. Very nice. So, I love this wine. I'm not usually a Pinot drinker, but this is very light like that. Yeah. And it's very nice and fruity and the honey is wonderful in it. This would probably be nice with some cheese and honey also. Mm. Absolutely. And so it's interesting. A couple things to about the wines. We're not trying to make a Pinot, mm -hmm. but stylistically, you right. know, lighter, fruitier wine, but with its own flavors. It's 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 about the flavors of, of New Hampshire. It's about the, the fruit that grows in our part of the world. It's our terroir, it. if you will. Yeah. And uh, and it was interesting hearing you talk about as you grew, uh, being challenged to find the ingredients. Um, we do our best to find all of our ingredients mm -hmm. as local as we can find right. them, but it's not easy. And so as we've grown and you know went from hundreds of pounds to thousands of pounds of fruit, um, we've had to uh, really s reach out further and right. uh, further across New England. And in a couple of cases, we've had to go beyond New England and, mm -hmm. and go to the Midwest, as you did, right. to get some of the fruit that we're using. But always trying to get the most local and the, the best quality, obviously, ingredients that we that's, can find. That's it. Yes. Yeah. It's a quality product, no hand, hands down. You know, And same with my salamis. It's not the grocery store basic products. Right. You can tell they're made with love and passion and care. So you can tell that. It's, I love it. I love it. I'm so glad you're That's here. It. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, essentially, this is uh, Gerilyn and, and my first outing in, in a year. <laughs> we, we've been hunkered down at home. So, yeah, so it's great. I'm glad we got a chance to, to get out. So You can have some wine later, guys. <laughs> yeah, we'll share. Don't worry. If there's any left, you can have no. <laughs> So, this is the first time we've had a live audience as well as a digital oh, wow, audience. Okay. Too. This is great. So, can we have some applause in the background? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Our two people. <laughs> so, uh, Love it. let's see. We got a couple. Barbara Dundon. Hi, Patty. Barb from. Yes, she's a customer. Schenectady. Schenectady. Schenectady, New York. Mm hmm. And uh, she's going to be here soon, she says. Okay, good. <laughs> um, and so, all right, let's let's uh, let's get back to some. She's of my been ordering online during COVID, so she keeps saying she's going to get back to the store and come back in here. It's not what's an hour and a half, maybe. Okay. Away, so she's been ordering online, and uh, that's nice. Hi, Barbara. So, uh, th this is another question that comes to mind as we've been talking. Obviously, your operation is a lot bigger than than what we see here behind us. You have a yeah. lot going on. So tell us a little bit about the scale. I mean, you sell this uh, around the, the country, maybe around the world, right? Right. So how big is the, the location? How many employees do you have? How, how, how large of an operation is Are you ready? Is we only have seven employees, plus wow. myself, plus myself. Um, so this store here, we opened it. It'll be four years in November. I think it's four years in November. We opened it as just a little pop-up store. That was our intentions because I had the bug to get into retail. My son was working for us in the office and I'm like, I called him from the parking lot and said, Chris, <clears throat> Chris, would you like to open up a little pop-up store? The landlord was here or nearby and I called him and he said, yeah, I'll do it for a few months. We figured go from November to through ski season because we're so close to all the ski mountains here. Yeah. So we'd go, you know, just those few months and then we'd be done with. And that's just, we called it our little warehouse on display because we had everything here. And at the time, all the mail order was getting done from here also. Um, there's a big back room over there that you haven't seen yet. Um, so all the mail order was getting done back there also. So it was, you know, we had everything here. It was just like you needed something for mail orders. You just grabbed it off the shelf. People walked in. It was Christmas time. They were doing gifts. So it worked. It worked so well, we're still here. <laughs> so much for pop-up. So much for pop-up. Um, and actually, we're looking to expand. So, you know, it's just, it's just, we're in a great spot. So all the mail order goes from our warehouse in Sandgate 
um, which where where I live also. So it all goes out of there, and all the so all the mail water now because we've grown so much over the years goes out of Sandgate. Okay. So we have a staff there of one, two, three, four, plus myself. And, and that's taking the orders and fulfilling them and getting them on the UPS trucks or wherever they're Yeah, going. we use UPS, FedEx, yep. Priority Mail, we use them all. And, you know, it's not it's not like it used to be that you take orders over the phone. Everything is online. Everybody finds our website and orders online, especially during COVID. I sold more pasta, more beans, more salami than I've ever sold in my life. <laughs> People are they're stocked up. Um, but it's been great. It's been great. Every day was like a Christmas week, you know, during COVID. So, um, so all the mail order goes out of there and then just this as a store now. Excellent. So how big is the operation where you actually make the sausage? How is, I, I don't know, scale wise, okay. maybe you could just describe that. <laughs> we used to have a 3000 foot square foot drying rooms. Okay. This is when we were in Rhode Island. Where are you, are you in town here? No, we're oh, not. So I, I, there's another story. Oh, good. We love stories. There's a story in every bottle. So there there's is a, a story, story in every sausage. It, it, I like that line. I, every salami. In yeah. Every salami. Um, so anyhow, we we don't make the salami ourselves. We have it co-packed now okay. for us um, because we outgrew our plant. Yep. And it was at that point, it was, do we expand or do we focus more on the direct to consumer and the mail order? Yep. Um, we still do all the spices. We still source the ingredients, the calabrese peppers, the pistachio, whatever. Um, and we still source all of that. And we do the spice packets. We send it to them and they just do the physical labor now. They put it together. They put it together and they have the drying rooms. Um, one of the companies, we deal with two of them. One is from Italy. One is from Spain. So they're both European mm -hmm. um, in the U.S., of course. But they're both European and they do it the same way as my family had done it. So that's, it was very hard to find that. And also to find someone who would not use nitrates because everybody's like, no, you need to use nitrates. And we're like, no, 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 no. We've, we've been doing this for a lot of years. We don't need nitrates. Good. So, yeah. So, so we don't have a physical plant right now. Well, that makes it a little easier, doesn't it? Or does it not? Does that um, complicate things? It complicates things. Okay. It complicates. Nothing is easy. You, cause, because <laughs> you don't have the same level of control in the day-to-day -day operation, right. so you have to be more right. attuned to what's happening. I mean, I talk to them almost every day okay. or email or text or, or whatever. Um, but, you know, basically, like your wine, once it's made and it's just sitting there, there's not much involved. It's just a matter of watching it, keeping an eye on it. And same with the salamis, they're just hanging there in the drying rooms. So there's just, you know, making sure the airflow is correct, making sure the humidity is correct is the important part. Okay. And curious, so mm -hmm. from when the, the product arrives in the in the uh, factory or the warehouse uh -huh. or the, the location where it's made yes. to when it is actually arriving here as a finished product is typically how long for the different products you make? A long time. A long time. <laughs> Sometimes too long. Um, <laughs> it is eight to 12 weeks. It all depends oh, wow. on the product. So, you know, the bigger the diameter, the the longer it takes to cure. It has to reach a certain water activity. You know, they all have their HACCP programs. So it needs to be HACCP certified. It's all under USDA, of course. Uh, so, you know, that would be, it all depends on which product it is, but anywhere from eight to 12 weeks, some, some longer. Well, that's nothing. We got one to two years oh. before we get products onto the shelf. Wow. <laughs> so, that's, that's long. <laughs> yeah, that's, so no, eight to 12 weeks for a, uh, for a, f is a really long time to imagine waiting for, for, for my meat to arrive. <laughs> right. <laughs> But uh, but then when you think about it, you know, when we first got into the wine business and, and Ken and I were talking about, well, we'll we'll make this and in a year we'll be able to share this with people. Oh. I'm like, oh, oh that's my goodness. hard. Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, because there's new items that we're making and you know, waiting to test. And it just we can't do it. You know, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. You know, you, you can taste it when it's raw, but it's not going to give you the flavor. It's not going to give you what you're expecting. Right. So it's just a matter. of, And then if that batch didn't work, you got to start all over again. 
So that's that's interesting. I mean, we have that same challenge. You know, uh-huh. it, it, we're in this constant rotation. There's products being made all the time, and they're coming online. And if something doesn't work quite the way you wanted it to, uh, do you struggle with trying to keep the keep your favorite products in hand and and available to your customers? Is that a challenge? It's a big challenge. Yeah. Yes, and especially you know we we had a pretty well down pat for since I've been in business for 30, 40 years. Um, so we pretty much had what we were selling down until this surge came. And every day was like a oh, Christmas week. Oh, and you week. were selling a lot more. And we're selling so much more and you couldn't make it fast enough. It's like like your wine. You know, if you sold out of this one, you're sold out. Yes, exactly. So we, we, we weren't prepared for that at all. We were going into the slowest part of our year, you know, last March and April. It's mud season around here and I'm sure New Hampshire. And we were going into the slowest time of year. So, it, and we were just getting down from Christmas holidays. So we were we were pretty wiped out. And then all of a sudden the surge came and yeah, we're finally catching up. Good. Finally. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. I 15 came months good later, time. you did. <laughs> you did. So let's have some more wine. I see your glass is empty. Almost, almost. So yes. We gotta, why don't you finish that and we'll try the next one here. Um, this is our, uh, let's see how we're doing on time too. Oh, we got plenty of time. It's 6, 6, 12. So, uh, this is our Petit Blue Reserve. This is our most famous wine. Again, many of you have had this before out there, but, but maybe you haven't. This is made entirely from wild Maine low bush blueberries. These are little Ooh. tiny berries that grow very close to the ground mm-hmm. in down East Maine. Um, there's a pound and a quarter of blueberries in every bottle. Um, it's our most famous wine. This was on the Kathy Lee and, uh, and this was on the Today Show with Kathy Lee and Hoda back in 2014. Oh my gosh. Which was just, just oh, you know, kind of like you were describing before. It was like this, how did that happen? Right. But uh, we got a chance to pour it for the editor of Food and Wine Magazine at a, at a show in New York that we were at. Mm-hmm. And four months later, he calls us out of the blue and he says, can we put this wine on the Kathy Lee and Hoda show? I said, well, let me think about that. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. we sent him a case. Yeah. So, uh, um, I know that feeling. <laughs> yes, it, it felt great. And then he called this out in 2017 in uh, one of the issues of Food and Wine as the best craft beverage in New Hampshire. Fantastic. Congratulations. Yes. And then Oprah Magazine. No. Yes. Oprah Magazine in 2019 in June uh, said, this is the one thing you shouldn't miss if you visit New Hampshire. So if you have a uh, if you have an Oprah list, uh, you can check this off. Because you can try some right now. I love it. So this is so it's hundred percent wild Maine low bush blueberries. The the low bush blueberries are ideal because they're they have a higher skin to juice ratio. Mm-hmm. And we really the skin of a blueberry is much much thinner, much smaller than or, or uh, much thinner than a than a grape skin. So in order to get the tannins that we need, we need to really ramp up that skin contact. So between having that higher ratio of skin to juice and also Ken is experimenting with longer and longer maceration time. So we're, we're spending a lot of time on those skins before we finish the fermentation process and uh, extracting as much tannin as we can. And then in this case, um, this is our Petit Blue Reserve. We do have a Petit Blue, which is lighter and fruitier. The Reserve spends a, a few months in French oak. Oh. Uh, not too much. We find blueberries really absorb oak quickly, mm-hmm. so we, we don't want to over-oak it. We want to keep that fruity character up front, but um, but just enough to, to give it some nice soft tannins. Wow. And uh, So, again, like a Pinot Noir and uh, 100% blueberry. Oh, you know, in all, I'm a wine drinker. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I'm a wine drinker. But on the whole, I don't normally drink berry wines. These are phenomenal. They <laughs> really you. and truly are. Like, Thank I think you. they're my new favorites. <laughs> you may have to leave a case when you, <laughs> we can barter. Um, no, but they really and truly are. Fruit fruit wines are not something I'm normally big on. Um, well, besides grapes, of course. But well, it's interesting to say but that. This, but the blueberry and the honey, I, it's not something I would normally think of. And it was, they're, they're fantastic. So, let me explain a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, please Because I'm with you. Okay. I don't drink fruit wines either, and I and I never did. Uh-huh. Ken and I and Chuck have we've we've grown up on 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 the wines of the world, California right. and France and Italy and and Australia, and, uh, and I need to bring Ken in on this because he's he I'm sure can uh, can help uh, enlighten us. Oh, oh, here we go. Yeah, that's a that's a great comment and. Um, so glad you picked up on that. I mean, Bob and, and Chuck and I really enjoy classic wines, European wines that um, provide you all those unique aromas, 
It a uh, very high level of engagement and wonderful ability to pair with foods. And a lot of fruit wine is not looking to do that. They're trying to preserve um, the fruitiness and they're often uh, sweeter and not that sort of wine that you would think of to, to grab with your, with your pasta for the meal or, or what have you. And we're finding that the fruits that grow well here in, in New Hampshire and New England can produce wines that, that are age worthy, that have good structure and that pair well with foods. Yes, this totally pairs well with foods. I can taste it. <laughs> well, so can taste it. That's uh, wonderful. Let's do that. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Let's see which one. Let me take another sip. Yeah. So it, again, the the uh, what Ken is doing, what we're doing, Herman Woods is is paving a whole new path. There's I don't know of any other winery that's that focuses entirely on making dry style fruit wines, and so. Uh, so this is a new journey, and uh, we're sort of writing the book. And, um, and there are others that are making dry fruit wines. We're not the only ones, but as a winery, that's all we do. There's no grape wines. There's no. Well, you know um, what? To a bestseller book, that's a that's <laughs> going to be a great book. I'm telling Excellent. you, it is great. It is really great. I think we should try the pistachio. Oh, I'm glad you said that because <laughs> this is my new to- this is my new favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to join you on that one. And when you said the pistachios came right from Italy, uh-huh. <laughs> that really perked my interest. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, that is Soft, good. creamy, little crunch of the pistachio. Um, oh, like I said, this is just my, my new favorite. Ooh. Goes very nice together. I, I haven't found one salami and one wine that don't go well together, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but is that me? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think I have to agree. Like I yeah. said, almost every episode where we're trying wine at the winery, we, the you first thing we salami. do is go grab some salami from the, from the kitchen. They do go so well together. I think you nail it with this one. I think so, too. This is right on. Yeah, I think so, too. Again, there's, mm. I don't know if I want to call it a spiciness, but... Black pepper. So there's a little black pepper. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it might be. The creaminess, um, so it doesn't come across as overly s- spicy for me because right. the creaminess is very dominant mm-hmm. and, and the, the the softness of it. But um, but there's a, a hint of spice that I think balances. Again, there's a little tartness in the petite flu. And, uh, Paul, is there fennel in, in the um, pistachio? There's this a is little the- bit of fennel, but it's... Uh, I think I think what Bob's tasting is the fermentation process. We ferment that longer than than most of our salt. Oh, okay. So, Paul, so a little more tang. Yes. So exactly. uh, he was just saying you can. I'll yeah. Let you explain. So he was just Paul was just saying. I asked Paul. I don't think you heard him, but he said it's a fermentation process. It's not heat added to it. It's the fermentation process. So as a wine aged in oak or aged in stainless steel or however, um, it's. It's how this is fermented and aged. You can sm- you'll be able to smell it, the fermentation. Right. You can smell the fermentation. Mm. And that's that's my favorite part. You open it. It's just like opening a bottle of wine. You open it up and you smell it and it's like, oh. So now that you've just tried it, can I have another one? Of course. <laughs> i got to try it the again. The whole platter's for get you. The, get those flavors. Give one to Ken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here you go, Ken. <laughs> it's, it's taken us a year and a half. Yeah, that one, we went to Sicily um, almost two years ago now and came home and like, we need to make a pistachio salami. It was so good. And here uh, it is. Gerald and I are uh, big fans of pistachios. We eat mm-hmm. them constantly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so do we. <laughs> so it's great. It's really interesting to hear you talk about this as fermentation. Yes. Um, yes. Because that's what we do. And it's I never exactly. think of fermentation when I think of meats. So, uh, and I, now that you mentioned that, I get that little tang that that's coming right. from that fermentation. Right. That's what it is. And that goes with that, just a hint of a tang from the, from the blueberry, a little sharpness uh-huh. from that. It absolutely does. And it, I think those are, those are perfect together. Going back to what you said earlier about publicity and things that have happened to us, how we got started in the USDA business and manufacturing salamis instead of just making them from our deli in Rhode Island we were written up in the Los Angeles Times. That didn't hurt. No. 
We had no idea. It was back in 91, 92 or something like that. And we had no idea. It was well before internet. So our phone was ringing off the wall and we didn't know, but the food editor was on vacation in Westerly, came into the store, bought the soupy, and she wrote about it in the Los Angeles Times. She was the food editor. Who knew? We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she called it America's Best, aged like a fine wine. And that's a quote that we have used since 1991. And we just, it, it's, it's just spot on. That's spot terrific. on. And so from there is where Jay Leno I started was say, ordering. That must have been how you saw you met Jay Leno. Right, right. We're Jay Leno. And then, you know, we've been fortunate enough with Marianne Esposito. I've cooked with her a few times. Um, Rachel Ray is like a regular customer, especially over the last year. Um, so, you know, we've been really, really fortunate. Food network people. I mean, it's just it's been great. And That's it's wonderful. all unsolicited. Yep. Which That's is the best. Which is the best. But I want to get on Oprah. <laughs> yeah, you and I both. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's my goal. I, I have to ask though, you, you did you meet Jay Leno? Yes. Did he come here or did you go there? Jay Leno came to Rhode Island. Okay. Uh, when we were in Rhode Island, yeah. and we went to the show in New York. Matter of fact, my mom and dad went. My sister and her husband went, um, and Paul and I they invited us to the Tonight Show, and we're sitting in the green room, and he comes walking in saying. You know, I smell Italian in here. I smell Italian in here, you know, and it was cute. And then <laughs> um, Paul's also into motorcycles. So that kind of is a little thing that Just kind of has thing, a little yeah. thing that's something together. <laughs> so we he invited us to the Tonight Show. Nice. And the photo that you see on the website, I'm not the Tonight Show, to his Jay's Garage. Um, so the photo you see on the website with me, he's like, Patty, come over here, take some pictures with me. And we're here for motorcycles, not sausage. But of course, I brought him some. And he's like, take some pictures with me. Come on. Don't you know how to advertise? Come on. Come on. You know? <laughs> I'm like, OK, I didn't want to ask, you know. But so anyhow, that's Jay Leno. So we've we've seen him. He's now we just send him things. Sure, sure. Yeah. So it's funny you said you that all happened in 91. My wife and I were living in Los Angeles oh. in 91. Um, we we lived in L.A. That's where we met. Actually, uh -huh. we lived in, in the oh L.A. area for uh, 11, 11 years, Gerald more than that. And um, and then we moved back to New Hampshire in 93. Oh my goodness. So, so do you remember the food editor of the Los Angeles Times? I don't. <laughs> because I mean, she <laughs> was like, everyone said she was like God as far as food goes. And um, you know, we just, we started, the phone's ringing off the wall. Like I said, there was no internet. And Jay Leno called one day during lunch and lunch hour rush and I'm like, I thought it was Paul's friend. <laughs> and he's like, this is, this is Jay Leno. Can I talk to Paul? I'm like, he's busy. It's middle of lunch hour. <laughs> and he's like, uh, uh, okay. And he says, this is Jay Leno. Tell him I call. And I'm like, really? And he's like, really? <laughs> and I'm like, I handed Paul the phone and like hid. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, that story goes back a while, but yeah. So, you know, he's, it was pretty fun. <laughs> So that was, you know, back in those days, Gerilyn and I, Gerilyn actually introduced me to wine tasting. She had a, she had had some experience with it before me. Uh -huh. And once I discovered it, of course, living in California, we must have visited hundreds, if not thousands of suppliers, wow, maybe not nice. thousands, but hundreds anyway. Yeah. Because uh, any time we had free time, we would leave and travel, the, you know, up and down the coast, up to Napa and Sonoma and, and down to, to San Diego and, wow. and, uh, and all this so much. And it's grown since then. I think there's 4,000 wineries in California, Ooh. so you could uh, you could really explore for the rest of your life and yeah. still have more to explore. So, but yeah, we're back here in New England, and I'm happy to be, yeah. be back in this area. Nice so. and easy, easy living, nice life. Yeah, yeah. nice life here. So. Yeah. So that was good. That was great. Uh, good pairing. So let me uh, let me get back to some questions. Sure. We don't, we run, let's see where time wise. We got five more minutes. So we know. Okay. What? Let me I'm just make sure I don't have anything I missed that I really wanted to get to before we uh, leave the questions. And, and I'm going to give you a taste of oh. our mortadella. Okay. And you think that goes with I the I don't think it's going to go good with this the deep rich one. Okay. So let's so, have it with the petite blue. Yeah. I think so. Before it's we go on to that deep one. Looks like you need some more wine in your glass. Oh, of course. You are Italian, aren't you? I am. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> How can you not? 
Mm. Oh. <laughs> delicious. <laughs> delicious. Wow, I haven't had, I didn't have lunch today. We were so busy flying over <laughs> here. So this has been, this is great. I love what I do. <laughs> Cheers again. Cheers again. <laughs> And remember, this is work. <laughs> mm. And I actually think that was that was even better than than might the even, pancetta. No, we, we tried the particular with the uh, with this one. Okay, it goes equally as good anyway. Yeah. Uh, they're both they all do delicious. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit of just a little bit of bread. Like I said, they all pair really well. I That's mean, the, really nice. Once you get to the spicier one, um, you You're need a need deeper. You need something bigger. I think you'll find that will will meet yeah. the, meet the need. So let me see what I got here for questions. I want to make sure I don't miss anything because I thought all about what am I going to ask when I finally get to be with you. And uh, let's see, we talked about that. So here's a good question for you. Uh huh. Um, and I ask this of everybody. So, okay. Um, um, you've been doing this a long time. Um, and and I, I pose it in sort of a strange way, but this is how I look at my life. Have you finally figured out what you want to be when you grow up? Um, probably over the last month or two, yes. Well, that's an interesting answer. That's an interesting answer um, because I didn't know if this is what I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And obviously it is what I want to do because I'm here, but for so many years. But, you know, it was like, do I want to retire? I'm getting up there. I'm in my 60s, early 60s, let's just say. I wouldn't know. Let's it, just but. say, let's just say. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm thinking of like, you know, do I want to work this hard? for the rest of my life or do I want to, you know, do other things? And I'm like, you know, I'm in a really good position. And like I said, just the last few months, it hit me that I would be bored to death if I retired, bored to death. And, um, you know, what would I do? You know, okay. I like to garden, but it can only pull so many weeds. Um, <laughs> Oh, no, True. you can pull weeds forever. Yeah, oh, you could. You're right. <laughs> um, I love to travel, but how much can you travel? You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'd love to my before COVID hit, I was going to Italy for a month and I was just going to live like the locals. Um, and that didn't happen. But we've already planned for September. So we're going to September. Good. But, um, you know, so I don't really know. So this is my passion. I've I and like I said, just the last couple of weeks, last couple of months, I've come to fruition that this is, I do love this. That's true. I do love my job. I, I don't, like I said, it's a love hate thing when the days are bad. Sure. It's hard, but you know, it is what I love to do. And I, I love carrying on the legacy. I love carrying on and sharing and seeing your face as you eat these things. And, and, and let me tell you, when you ate that mortadella just now, you really lit up. So <laughs> yeah. I haven't had something like that in a long time. Right, but seeing <laughs> that is what really I love it, um, and that's what makes me really happy. So yes, that's this, great. I don't have any regrets. Maybe twenty years ago I may have, but not now. That's great. Yeah, I feel the same way. I, great. I, I tell people that I that I see it at at the winery. I'm going to die here. This is where I'm going to be. Yeah. Um, I may not be spending the seventy hours a week doing it. Um, hopefully, I'll have some some team members that'll that'll help pick up some of that slack for me. But yeah. but that's what I love to do. I love to be with the people that that appreciate. I love seeing the smiles on their faces when they try our products, just like you described. And uh, and that means a lot to me. And is uh, ditto. It's, it's going to yeah. be with me for the rest of my life. So. Yeah, I, I I agree a hundred percent. And it's just it's a great feeling to finally get to that point. Like okay, I don't mind working so much and. And I have a great, great team right now. Probably the best team I've ever had. That's so, great. you know, fingers crossed. Love you guys. Um, but, you know, they're, they're all great. And they all have their strengths. It's, it's amazing. I, I, have to, I have to. And it makes a world of difference. Say the same. Because we had a group of people. We had some shortages this weekend, some of our staff. And mm -hmm. we had a team of staff that came in and knocked it out of the park. Nice. We worked harder this weekend than we've probably ever worked. We had more people come through the door than we've ever had come through the door. And it all went really well. And it's our team. 
that made it happen. I couldn't, I couldn't have, Ken couldn't have even scratched the surface for what needed to be done in the last right. three days. And our team of staff came through for us. And that's what it's all about. It is. And, uh, and it's, it's about them. And it's about the people that come in the door every day. Exactly. So you get to know your friends, your, yeah. uh, your customers, your, you know, even the ones that are writing from afar, you become, you have relationships with them, even yeah. though you don't see them. I can't the tell you how many people email me. I have two that I can't forget that emailed me yesterday, you know, Patty, I need my same order as I got last time, ship it to my Florida address, ship it to my New Jersey address, whatever it is. And it's, it's like, you know, you got my card, you know, just, just do it. And it's in, they trust me. Yeah. They love our products. They trust in me. They trust in me to get it out to them. And I just love it. It's just personable. Right. And, and it's not, you know, a grocery store or a, big box store right. it's it's personal and that's that's what makes it worth worth all the while it really does excellent yeah so with that let's try our last yes. wine yes and, uh, I, i'll have a new glass okay excellent and uh because i'm gonna drink this one later um i hope all of you out there are with us uh for a few more minutes we're a little over our time but you know we do that every week so <laughs> <laughs> we're having a little fun yeah so this is our hermitage and i'm gonna i'm gonna bring ken in to describe it if he's still there Oh, look, he's, he, see, he hears me coming. Here we go. Tell us about yeah. Hermitage, Ken. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is a blend. The last one that oh you had gosh. with the Peak Blue Reserve was a, was, a, was straight blueberry wine. And as they've discovered in Provence and elsewhere, that when you bring the best aspects of particular grapes together, you make something that's much more... Uh, much more than the individual parts. And so we've done that here. This is a blend of, of four separate wines, each vinified separately and aged in barrels, French oak barrels for a couple of years separately, and then blended. It's primarily blackberries and blueberries, also a good dose of elderberry, and then some black currant. And those are all blended together. And it uh, it drinks to me a bit like, like a Provence red. So it's got yes. some good acidity, but some some softness from the extended barrel aging. That's the 2017 vintage that you have right there. Thank you, Ken. Unbelievable. Great job. Thank you. This is, this is unbelievable. This is my favorite. This is my kind of wine. Well, it, Ken mentioned Provence, but you know, a lot of folks who have tried this mentioned Italian wine. There, there's some, some, something about this that's reminiscent of some of the, some of the Italian wines. That, yeah. That have See, I like a really know. rich red bodied wine. Yeah. It all depends what I'm eating it with, but sure, this is, of course. all right. And if you're out of time, dig into this right here. Just, we're at the point you can use your finger. We have enough wine. Thank you. Oh, I got two. Oh, darn. Oh, darn. <laughs> then, what is this? This is our new Spinata. Sorry, I got my mouth full. It's our Calabrese salami and we flatten it down, <laughs> right? I love the spice. Isn't that great? These mm. are the Calabrian peppers that we brought from Italy. And it's not overpowering. It's just enough heat to, mm -hmm. to make it work. Everything we make, we don't put that much heat into yep. it. There's, there's some that are very hot, yep. but you're not losing that flavor. Yeah. And it's that's the most important and part. It's consistent throughout your mouth. It mm -hmm. does, it's, not, it's not overpowering in any way at all. And the, meat, the, the other meats and flavors and spices come right through that, the, the heat. Well, how does it taste with the wine? Delicious. Yeah. Delicious. Hmm. I'm not sure if it tones the heat down a little bit, the wine. Hmm. They all go well. I'm just enjoying them. <laughs> hard to... Wow. This hmm. has been so much fun. It really has. I was nervous. I didn't have to be. <laughs> Well, you and I both. We this had is, wine. This is the only. <laughs> we've had a few bottles, a few glasses. So, um, so yeah, the same thing. We, you know, this is only the second time that we've we've ventured off our show into the into the world. Yeah. Um, we've been hunkered down like everybody else with COVID, and and I really want to 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 bring this conversation out to the world because what what this is all about is it, you know not just the wine that we make but the friends that we make along the way and the things that the things that complement our wine and the food and the farmers that grow a couple of weeks ago, we, we went out and visited a local farmer who's providing Aww. us some of our fruit. 
and we talked about what 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 it means to to grow the fruit that that makes the wine. Right. And, and this is the food that we 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 serve with the wine, and it's all a big family of it people is. across the the New England area that that really come together to make Hermit Woods and our deli and our experience special. And so we want to make sure to highlight all of the people that are part of making what what we do special every yeah. day. Yeah, so. great job. Great, great job. So, bravo, bravo. Thank you. Thank so. you. I really appreciate it. And thank all of you for uh, for staying with us for a few extra minutes. Um, we could talk, I think, all day. In fact, we'll probably yeah. continue talking after, yeah. after you uh, <laughs> after you leave. Um, but if you have questions that we didn't get to, um, I, I really wanted to, to to make sure we, we, we got to all of the stories so we didn't spend as much time on our questions. So if we didn't get to your questions, we will get to them later. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, every Monday at 5.30, we're gonna be here with you, uh, sometimes with guests, sometimes we'll be doing wine tastings. Um, tune in uh, next Monday at 5.30 to see what we're up to. And uh, again, thank you so much for joining us and have a great week and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. Ciao.